but then I changed a little bit on this word here. Assuming year one is a base year. So when assuming year one is a base year, you have to use this one as 100 instead. That's the only difference if you see the answer guide. Okay. Previously, the answer is prepared for this sentence here only. But then, as a tricky lecture, I add one sentence here, but I forgot to change the answer here. So when I, even though this one is showing one, two, three, but I ask you to assume year one is a base here, then the CPI have to be 100 before you do the calculation for RGTP for year two. Okay, other than that, I think most of it is quite straightforward. Any question you want me to discuss here? For tutorial 4.1, I bet most of it can do right. So no point discussing as well. Let's now, I will off my webcam and start lecture. For fiscal policy, this one don't have anything relatively new. All right, don't have anything relatively new to chapter one. However, the only thing that you haven't learned is the diagram. So we will just quick, quickly go through for fiscal. But for monetary policy, there are a lot of new things. So must be very careful. As for what is the monetary and what's fiscal policy? Monetary policy is supported by medium fragment. Medium fragment is the normal price we know in economics, million fragment say, the government must give money to the banks to keep borrowing costs low and credit flowing. Low interest rate are the key to a stable monetary policy. Okay, this is what Milton fragment say, which means Milton fragment actually support monetary policy. Okay, those who follow Milton fragment call themselves as the monetarists. Those who follow Milton Friedman economies name themselves as monetarists. Okay, so as the name suggests, you should know what type of policy they are supporting. Okay, compared to John Menekins, John Menekins never win Nobel Prize Economics Prize before. Do you know why? Any idea? I. Why John Menekins never win? John Menekins is the godfather of macro. Why why he cannot win a Nobel Prize? Economics win. Winner. Why is he not an economics prize winner? Any idea? Ayn, are you there? Ayn. How would I know, Jerry? How would I know? Do you know why it's a Nobel Prize? Do you know what's Nobel Prize? Yeah, I know. Okay, because yes. he's dead before Nobel Prize is introduced. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, something like that. That's why there's no Nobel Prize. John Menekins say otherwise. John Menekins is the one that support fiscal policy. He said the government must spend to create demand and avoid economic calamity. Running fiscal deficit is a necessary evil that will raise interest rates. So one say, Supporting fiscal policy say to increase interest rate. The one that support monetary policy say decrease interest rates. So what do your government do? What do you think? What your government do? One is increase interest rate, one is decrease interest rate. Alicia. Do, do, what do you think the Malaysian government do? No, Joel, he's not wrong. Uh. Otherwise, you would not have been in macroeconomics right now. Only his his theories is like too, too old already. That's all. Right, too old until because of the technology advancement, so everything become wrong. Yes, Alicia. Why you all like to start with um, um something? Dude. What do you think Malaysia government do? This one suggests monetary policy. Okay. John Menekins, the one that followed John Menekins, call themselves the Kinesians. Okay. 
Okay. Don't ask me why those who follow Milton Friedman don't call themselves Friedmanists. Maybe the, the sound is not, not really, very nice. But those who follow John McCain's call themselves Keynesians. Right? Keynesians are the ones that support support fiscal policy. So most of the government they do both. That is when we say crap. Right? That's the problem with the government. They only listen to something that they like. That's the problem. Right? So the objective for fiscal policy, you need to know how to define fiscal policy. I think I already shared with you before, however, this one, I give you another definition so that you can use either one or you can make your own words to do your own definition for fiscal policy and how this fiscal policy will affect economic activity. This one, nothing new. The definition of fiscal policy it can be the method used by the government to achieve certain economic objectives. Usually depends on whether I want to talk about expansionary or contractionary. In your essay, I want you to make sure you write it properly. I don't want you to just write fiscal or monetary. Right? You should think about how to write using the specific. Okay? Economic objective is economic growth. Expansionary if it's unemployment, decrease unemployment is expansionary. If it is inflation, then contractionary. This one you can write in here if you want to use expansionary or contractionary. And for expansionary, you have to use this one, decrease and increase. If you want to write definition properly, it will be we are decreasing tax revenue and increasing expenditure. For inflation, you will have to talk about where increasing tax revenue and decrease expenditure. So all of this general definition can be expanded into specific definition. What's the objective or function for fiscal policy? The main function is to collect revenue. As you know, government need money. Although through bribery, they can also collect a lot of revenue. So they not necessarily they need tax because they can just collect bribes in your government and they will use the money to allocate spending and unfortunately in a lot of countries corrupted countries their spending are most probably chances are is into their own pockets and redistribute income i told you before this is also nonsense these are just some excuses you can think that these are some excuses that i'm used so that they can charge you more tax All right or they can justify why they want to build their roads, why they want to build their office and give them to their cronies and their minions company. Redisplay income, I told you before, I think in micro before, so I think in macro before also, that this is nonsense. Why this is nonsense? One yen, just nice. Onion, why really spiritual income is a nonsense for me? Don't tell me you also when. What is a cyclical fluctuation? What? Fluctuation? I'm not talking about the, the next one. Can you focus on redistribution of income first? Not corruption. Corruption already like can be done in arrow kids. Basically, I really told you before, right? They say to tax the rich, right? And subsidize the poor, right? Is what they say, right? Right? But the rich are not affected. Even you want to redistribute income just like that. Just imagine you yourself increase the tax for the rich. If you increase the tax for the rich, the expenses went up. So usually rich one are the entrepreneur entrepreneurs, right? The expenses went up. When expenses went up, what type of expenses they can cut?
in terms of you are the boss and government decided to increase your tax, which one you can cut? If I increase the tax means my cost increase, right? So I have to cut other, other places, right? I have to cut other expenses. So which one can I cut? Ladies and gentlemen, please type in, let me know. The witch, the labor, right? That's why. Right? Who is the labor? Labor is the high income group or low income group? Type in, let me know. Labor is high income group or low income group usually? Usually, of course, there are the outstanding one like the CEO, COOs, and CFOs. This one we don't want to mention. The low income group, right? Average is lower income group compared to the entrepreneurs. So if I cut this one, low income group, they will even become even more lower income than before because I either I minus their wage. I did with their wage or I fire them, right? Then how is it helping the poor? You think what the subsidize the poor? Is it enough? What? How much they give for flood? Flood, flood citizens. Anyone encounter flood? How much you claim for the from the government? Anyone? Your house has flood issues last time. How much is the subsidies that the government give? For flood, for example, the poor. Yeah. Of course, the rich one they usually live in a very high top mountain hill and something in the mansion, so they will not have any flood issues. So flood issues are usually for those living in the low, low or near the river bank. One thousand ringgit. One thousand ringgit compared to the salary that they cut. Are you really helping the poor or you're harming the poor? Right. Think about that. Think about if they subsidize the petrol, right? Hey, yo, round 95, very important, very important for the poor, you know? You think the rich one will not pump? Round 95, by the way, for international students, is just our lower budget oil or petrol, lower budget petrol. Yeah, they subsidize the round 95, right? You think the rich one will not pump round 95, is it? What do you think? Were the rich one? Do you think everyone, everyone buys supercar? They only pump round ninety seven and the uh, round two thousand. What do you think? Were the rich one pump ninety five as well? Type in yes or no. Let me know. All of them have sport car, is it? Yeah, they will also pump round ninety five. My question to you is. Who has more cars? I let you choose, right? The poor and the rich car. The poor have how many cars? Right? This is is this even a car? This just consider this a motorbike. Right? The poor usually use what? Car or motorbike? Car or motorbike. The poor or even bicycle, the poor way. Helicopter, knock your head. Wait, yeah, I know you use helicopter to go to Genting, right? Wait, yeah. right? Uh, when can you fetch me to Cameron Highland? My second wife, hometown is in Cameron Highland, it's always jammed. Wait, yeah. can you lend me your helicopter? Uh, wait, yeah. Because there's, there's also flooded issues, there's also traffic jam every day, right? Yeah, sampan. Sampan is for the poor. The rich one, they don't use sampan, they use luxury yacht, right? Walk to Genting. Wow, wait, yeah, you see? Ladies and gentlemen, can you see the rich, in, the high income group? I told you what, the house is near to top mountain, right? I just told you that, right? So can you, can you see that? Wei Jie every day use helicopter to transport himself to Genting. Now he's not even in Genting anymore because he walked to Genting because his house is just beside Genting Highland, which is luxurious mansion. And another thing is if he plan to come to college, he is going to use helicopter and park the helicopter just on the football field. Right, Wei Jie? 
because he can walk to Genting means is a stone throw away, lah. Your mention, right? Stone throw away from the Genting Highland, I guess. <laughs> right or not? Wait there. Means your your mansion is a stone throw away from Gunding Highland. That's why you walk, right? So yes, all of them either use public transport or motorbike, like LRT. Just now what you mentioned, LRT for the international student. LRT is something like the light rail transit. It's a subway type of, type of thing, right? How much petrol do we use for motorbike? How much petrol do we use for car? Right? And who has more cars? Who has more car? The rich or the poor? Tell me, let me know. Rich or poor? The rich has more car. So in the end, we are still subsidizing the rich. So why you want to become the poor one? You have to become the rich one, right? Or you have to work. Go and become entrepreneur. Okay? Working will not help you, seriously. Uh, yes? Anything? Wait there. You call me. I understand your story, Eva. Never mind. I just pretend to know. So that is nonsense as well, but that is just their excuse. The last one is to stabilize cyclical fluctuations. Basically, it's just this one, because just now some people, one year already asked, what is that? I don't understand why you don't understand, because this one is a chapter two thingy, right? Cyclical fluctuations. So what, what the government need to do, since you don't understand, you have to answer one yen. Answer again, what is cyclical fluctu fluctuations? Onion, business cycle, yes. Stabilize, how do I stabilize? I mentioned before in chapter one and chapter two before. How do we stabilize? See whether you're sleeping or not during that time. As usual. No answer. Yeah, one yen. Because you, you don't understand man. what is cyclical fluctuations. So you answer la, one yen. Yep, so Joel help you ready. Basically, it's just using the fiscal policy to smoothen the business cycle, like what I mentioned before, remember? In order to let make it like lesser coaster, right? Lower coaster, right? Make it smoother, that is what we call stabilize the cyclical fluctuations, right? Other goals include, or we, when we, before we go to the other goals, Look at this dice, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the dice. Why this is drawn as a dice? Li Tong, why is this drawn as a dice? Or who want to answer? Tap in me. I want to answer. Tap in me. Raise up your hand. For those who want to help Li Tong, tap in me. Let's see whether you want to answer or not. Don't know leh. Ah, I already told you many times already. Type I, H, and I, right? Even you don't know, you have to act smarter a little bit. I, H, and I, right? Yes. Right, Joel and Fernando already tell you the answer. Li Tong? Okay, they're right. Because I told you before, due to the government can only make choice and when they make a choice, there will be opportunity cost. So if they want to achieve equity, then they will have to decrease growth and stability. If they want to achieve stability and growth, for example, oh no, actually even growth and stability is opportunity cost because if they want growth, the cycle will not be very stable and so on. So all these are opportunity costs. That's why they draw it in terms of one dice. Okay, other thing they want to achieve is full employment. They, they want to make sure the employment is not only about labor having full employment, they also want to make sure 
other resources like capital goods and land is also fully employed or fully utilized, right? Using fiscal policy, they, they can use tax or subsidies to make the fluctuation of the price to become lesser so that they become stable. That is for the stable goods like necessities, fruits, vegetables, and chicken, there are some farm, farm products. Right. They can also use tax and subsidies to provide certain goods and services that's not provided by the private market. So maybe they can subsidize the traffic light production so that the private sector will produce the traffic lights. They can also use fiscal policy for economic growth purpose. So basically that's all for fiscal policy. The next one will be expansionary and contractionary. Expansionary fiscal policy just now, Joel already answered during the recession, they have to increase government spending and decrease tax. And there will be a sale of manufacturer increase and employment income and upward search and economic growth. However, the one that you haven't noticed yet is this one. This one miss an arrow, please help me to add it in. So as long as the government is using expansionary fiscal policy, the government spending is going to increase. When G increase to G1, C will increase to C1, I will increase to I1. Or if you want to talk about tax, if you want to talk about tax, it will be government decreased tax. However, it's not shown here. If government increased tax, a decreased tax, it will increase their disposable income. So you have to talk about C increase to C1, I increase to I1 first. Okay. Then you G, you will just remain like that. That is how you show expansionary fiscal policy. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? That makes sense, if it makes sense, yep. All right, can you please draw this expansionary fiscal policy in your one note? I really distribute the chapter five to you by right, you should be able to see right now. So please go to class practice one for week nine and draw in the first one, expansionary fiscal policy. That's the only additional thing in fiscal policy that you haven't really learned. Okay, I'll give you one minute. A minute, two minutes. Any question you can type in right now. Remember to draw the arrow as well because this one is the shift in the E curve. Done. Having done, if you are done,
Done? The E curve is dotted. Now this one is not really dotted actually. I just used another type of curve. It should be a solid one. Can you see that? Maybe when I project it to you, it looks like dotted, but actually it's not dotted. Isaac, all right? Make sense? When do we use dotted line? Dotted line is something that's invisible. It's just something that we want to draw for intersection usually. That is when we draw dotted line. Solid line is usually what is really in the economy. Okay? What is really in the economy? That is when we use the solid line. Make sense, Isaac? Right. So continue on the contractionary policy. For contractionary policy, of course, it's during a boom when we want to counter attack the inflation. Okay. This is where we need to decrease our gun spending and increase tax. Decrease government spending, maybe we want to build lesser traffic lights, for example. Right, increase tax, maybe we can increase the consumer tax, we can increase the income tax, we can increase the corporate tax. Right? Just make sure you know at least one scenario for you to write if you want to talk about tax. And also because of this increase in three tax or decrease in government spending, the sale of manufacturers will drop. Sale of manufacturers drop doesn't mean that every time it must be linked to the consumption drop. But you can just straight away write about government when government purchased by like blesser of the cement right the tar the bricks the sand of them the sales will also drop it's not necessary you have to link until c drop then only sales of the manufacturers drop unless what you link is linked to tax if you link to tax then you have to talk about consumption first right as a result all this employment will drop will fall income and output will fall and it will lead to price stability right so the price level finally go down in order for you to draw contractionary fiscal policy depends whether you are talking about government spending or tax if you want to talk about government spending usually again we start from g to g1 so you have to talk because government decreased spending, as can be seen from the diagram, government spending has already decreased from G to G1. This will lead to then all these different things to drop, right? C drop, I drop, sales drop, workers become unemployed, income drop, then C continue to drop and I continue to drop from C to C1 and I to I1, then AE will drop from AE to AE1. Then you have to draw this arrow, AE1, then National income will also drop. However, it will lead to inflation to be lower. Right? Although it's not good for the, not really good for the economy. Like unemployment will increase, and economy will slow down. But it will lead to inflation to be stabilized. Right? This is what you need to write if I were to ask you this question. Okay, please draw this in the second diagram in here contractionary <coughs> same thing give you two minutes type in done if you're done
Done? Does that mean done if you're done? Done. Really, that hard to grow. Of course, these two are Keynesian models. You can also use ADS model to represent actually. So why I use Keynesian model to draw this? Because I want to illustrate another point. Okay, I want to illustrate if there's an inflationary or deflationary gap. For example, in this case, it may be due to the deflationary gap. Just imagine now this one is YFE and we want to shift it up, right? This is currently inflationary gap. Okay, how do we shift it up? Okay, this is currently deflationary gap. So how do we shift it up? Government need to increase government spending. However, what I want to tell you is if the deflationary gap, for example, the Y and YE, the difference is 5,000, right? And the MPC is 0 0.8, the government don't need to spend 5,000 to close the gap. The government only need to spend 1,000 ringgit to close the gap. Does it make sense? Don't make sense? No, no, yes. <laughs> Due to, in economics, we have multiplier effect okay we have multiplier effect just using these numbers i just simply make up the numbers right just consider your gap your y f e minus y now which is change of y right is equals to five thousand so the government don't need to spend five thousand in the market because we have multiplier okay government doesn't need if the government know they are multiplied very well doesn't need to spend 5000 okay why is that they have to look at their mpc if they are wise government Unfortunately, I don't think your government even know what's multiplier, I guess. Well, okay, can you imagine even a, even a foundation student, they know what is a multiplier. They just simply spend money. Your government just simply spend money. And I don't know where they spend the money until they every month, every year also say they are broke. Anyway, and now they are going to plan, they plan to spend some money finally for flood alarm system and finally they are going to define what is the definition for flash flood wow so surprising finally after 30 60 years what of independence 60 years of independence finally they're going to define what is the meaning of flash flood uh, that's what okay, I mean. okay so if they understand their multiplier very well they actually, for example, just now I use this case 0 0.8. Actually, the multiplier will be just 1 over 1 minus MPC. For example, it's just be 1 over 0 0.2. If the multiplier is 5, the government only need to spend, need to increase their spending by 1,000. Because 1,000 times 5, it will lead to 5,000 and the gap will be close. Does it make sense right now? Yeah. Right. Okay. 
However, a lot of governments, they simply spend until they overshoot. When they overshoot the economy, suddenly become inflationary again. That's why your, your country always have inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation. That is when your government is incompetent. They don't know how to measure their multiplier properly. Right? Similar in this scenario here, in this scenario, for example, that is when we have a inflationary gap. If I were to use it for the previous chapter, right, inflation gap, then this one it will be IFE. So now because we overspend, we we have to like decrease our spending. And this is when they need to use contractionary. If the gap is five thousand, they don't need to decrease spending by five thousand, otherwise it will be spending too less. Like they will spend twenty thousand lesser in the economy, assuming the multiply is five they will have to actually spend 1,000 lesser only. If they decrease their government spending by 1,000, then they will achieve their goal, which is contractually by 5,000. Does it make sense? Yes? That is for fiscal policy. That is for fiscal policy. Any question? I told you that it's just something similar what you have discovered in chapter one, only we add two more diagrams, that's all. Right? Later on, maybe you can also use these two diagrams to help you in your essay if this were to come out. Right? No question. Let's have a break. I, I don't want to con I don't want to start monetary policy now. Let's have a break then we can start the essay. Any question? No. Increase tax and spending at the same time. In the real world, yes, Pasha. In the real world, a lot of government are STUPID enough to do both. They even do increased tax and increased spending. They also even do increased interest rate and increased money supply at the same time. So the economy always has some mixed effects. Depends on which which one the weightage, right? What's the weightage? Which one is carrying heavier weight than another one? But usually monetary policy is faster in fiscal compared to fiscal policy. No, it will not have zero effect, Joel. I just told you like monetary policy is usually faster. The effects will be faster. You can see the effects faster compared to fiscal policy. Right? Fiscal policy requires a longer time, longer term compared to monetary. Right? Because and when I increase interest rate, everyone can straight away see the interest rate increase. But if the government increase spending, for example, Increase spending, then have to look at the sales, then later on, then they, they only they order the cement, then only they order the bricks, then only they build, then only they hire the workers. It will usually be a longer term compared to monetary. Does it make sense to all of you? Make sense? Right. Then I will end the recording and please prepare. What you